I went over to Hamburg for a meeting and I stayed on board the old Trinity House vessel number, 18, uh, number 13. And on board, they have working machinery that I used to work on, like the old Gardner engines and the generators. And I was invited to start up the engine and put all the, uh, the electricity online with the old knife switches, just as it was on the needles. And just to hear the engine running again was, was great. So I think the smell and even the sound of the machine you really like is, is a very important part of it. I love the sound this makes. <laughs> Uh, when I first joined the Lighthouse Service, um, such a novel experience, I thought I'd keep a, a scrapbook of all my experiences. And um, <clears throat> this is a result. It dates from, as we see here, uh, enter the service, first 1970. So that dates it a bit. And I had a record made up to AK, which is assistant keeper, in August 1971. And then promoted to temporary principal keeper in 1992 and early retirement on redundancy terms, September 1998. This station was automated in May 95. Now, I had a choice then. I could either stay here as the attendant and carry on living in this house, um, or um, I could carry on as a principal keeper, but I would have been, as each station was automated, you'd be going from pillar to post. So you'd be going perhaps Alderney, and then as soon as Aldi was uh, automated, you go somewhere else. <clears throat> Everything you see here belongs to the Association of Lighthouse Keepers. Um, down in this corner are more Trinity House archives. Got a photographic and uh, book archive over here, and underneath the, uh, in the corner, at the other side of the room. So it represents um, quite a large part of my world, I'm afraid. <laughs> you can see it's fairly well crowded. The, at the last count, we had over 9,000 individually registered items. Watch me take one of these down. This one here, for instance. <coughs> is photos of Trinity Housekeepers, um, alphabetically A to I, by station name. And for instance, we come over here, there's photographs of keepers at work. It, many of these photographs go right back to the 1940s, there's some here. This is not a very good copy, but uh, here we go. This is a chap on Beachy Head, for instance. And he's obviously doing the cooking. That's Bob Collis, who I knew at one time. Dead now, poor chap. But it's an interior shot. It shows the stone surround for the fire, which is all since gone. Stone sink. A coal-fired range, which we used to cook on. And it's all the incidental things of life. Like the sink plunger up at the top there. And there's a brush for the, uh, for the stove at the side. And some of you might find a teapot on the, on the, on the mantel. But unfortunately, with many of these photographs, we don't understand, or we don't know, who, who the keepers are. We haven't got names for them. It's a great shame. Seventeen and a half I was, seventeen years and a half when I started. Come straight from grammar school into this. They stuck, sorry, they stuck me on the wolf frog 
and I was, I was mad about football and I thought they sort of would never last. But I did a fortnight and enjoyed it so much, I stayed. Suppose you know the story about the small lighthouse, small lighthouse, two men on the lighthouse, no communications in those days. Gale comes up, one man dies. So now the other, the other man cannot get rid of the body because he'd be accused of murder. So he tied the um, body to the railings and waited for a boat to come closer and could single for help. And that, from that day onwards, had to be three lighthouse keepers on the lighthouse. That's how it came about. Although there was a shift pattern, um, whenever you were sort of walking around the tower or the lighthouse, if you saw something that needed doing, you'd do it. You wouldn't go back into the kitchen and say to mate who's on watch, hey, so-and-so needs doing. You'd, you'd do it yourself, you know what I mean? You just, just for something to do. to like the loneliness, to be able to get on with other people, and mind your own business generally, yeah. You've got to be able to um, be happy with yourself, right? Um, just be affable, um, you know, not wanting to do everything your way, or, you know, if somebody says, do you mind doing that? Yeah, you know, you muck in. You've you got to get on with, with people. We'd have long conversations in, in, in the night 
about philosophy, on everything, everything you can think of, about how the earth is formed, the universe, um, social philosophy, how do you create your own philosophy, and all the most ridiculous things you could possibly imagine. We had long conversations that really expands your mind because you had the time and the leisure to do it. You're not under pressure to go to bed to get up in the morning. If you get to bed late, well, so what? You can lie in a bit um, the following night. And you get somebody on that, that level, that is extremely rewarding. I always thought that first week on, you told each other all your news. Second week, you told each other all your jokes. Third week, you were beginning to get on each other's nerves. By the end of the fourth week, you could cheerfully strangle each other. Um, and within an hour of coming ashore, you were all in the pub having a beer together. So it, 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 I, I mean, I didn't realize it at the time, I've realized it now, um, but first few days ashore, when I used to come ashore, I used to run around like a headless chicken. I did. Um, you know, I'd want to be in the pub, I'd want to be, um, I just want to be with people, I suppose, really, that's what it was. The woman would um, embrace his way of life as a novelty to start with. But then when he starts going away for a month and she has to be left home to fend for herself, all this novelty starts to wear off pretty quickly. <laughs> where she might have trouble with her neighbours, or the bills started coming and she couldn't pay them. And that was a very, very real social problem. Um, I've known many keepers, I do have to say many keepers, who were divorced directly because they were in the service. And the fact that their wives just couldn't, couldn't cope with it. Ah, that was a little bit delicate. Because everything seems to be blown out of proportion. Whereas your child might have mumps or something, but you stuck out there, can't get ashore and things like that. It made things get bigger. That was a bit frightening. And the other thing I didn't like personally was I did 13 Christmases away around the rocks. And I got three boys. And that hurt. That was hard work. Made you go against ladders keeping a little bit, but you soon got through it. I mean, Fishing, yeah, you know, everybody did a bit of fishing here and there, kite fishing and what have you. Um, but people made jumpers, knit, knitted jumpers, other people did uh, models, put um, models in bottles and things like that. My, my own, because um, I'm sort of gregarious outlook, I used to chat on CB radio because in the uh, late 70s, early 80s, CB radio was the, the thing. Like, everybody used to chat. And we had a an aerial on the running up and down the tower on the Wolf Rock. And I used to chat to people up as far as Plymouth. If you wanted time on your own, you'd go up in the lantern and listen to the radio or, you know, whatever. Or the favourite thing was going up on the, providing the weather was all right, was going up on the helipad and just walking round and round and round the helipad thinking about anything, you know, whatever comes into your mind. I mean, it was a form of exercise as well, but it also got you away from the other two blokes. More newspaper cuttings, another transfer here, 1977. You have been transferred from Wolf Rock Lighthouse to Flathome Lighthouse with effect from 24th of March 1977. That was a good move. Two and a half years on Wolf Rock, and they used to reckon uh, two years used to be a maximum, but because of the um, helicopter relief, they re they stopped all that. And um, in fact, this is the only transfer I ever actually asked for. Prior to this, I'd always just sat back. <coughs> Trinity House sent me a letter, and um, I'd be moved on somewhere else. But this one, we felt the conditions on the wall were so bad that my friend Eddie and I both put in our transfer notices together. You've got plenty of bad storms, yeah, yeah. We were on Bishop Rock, um, and it was uh, just after Christmas, it was between Christmas and New Year, um, and we had a southerly storm. 
you don't get many southerlies, but this was a really bad southerly storm. And it was blowing well, force 10, 11, hurricane force at times um, for about three days. When the sea hits the bottom of the tower, the tower trembles like that. The tower's been there, you know, 100 and odd years. It's seen a lot of storms, you don't worry about it. This particular time, the sea hit the tower and it trembled. And it would tremble for about four or five seconds, you know. Whilst it was trembling, we got hit by a second sea. And it didn't tremble, it bloody shook. The alarm started going off, we thought, Christ, what's going on here? Ran up the tower into the lantern. The lens on the bishop is a five ton lens, similar to that, and it floats on mercury. The shaking of the tower had shook the mercury out of the trough. So the lantern was awash with mercury. We went back downstairs, put our spacesuits on, masks, all the gear for recovering mercury, back upstairs, and we were literally dustpan and brush sweeping the mercury into dustpan. We were literally cleaning up mercury for about three or four days. Saddest day of my life. Saddest time of my life. I mean, I was well, I'm from the old school. I mean, some of the youngsters took it like a duck out of water. No problem. Duck in water, I should say, sorry. But um, no, 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 I just, sad, I can say it was one of the saddest things I ever saw in my life. Yeah. I mean, for example, I was stationed at Santa Anne's head and you could see Skokum the smalls and we had computers up there whereas the light would come in automatically on Skokum or smalls where the young, the young crew would just tap the button and carry on with what they was doing myself I tapped the button but I had to look at Skokum to see if the light came in you know what I'm trying to say I just couldn't it took a long time that did it was a hell of a change in my life
Must be high, mate. If I step back and don't trip over. Um, we've got telecontrol. This sends all the information on the lighthouse to Harwich, where everything's monitored through one computer. Uh, that computer operates and controls all the lights within the Trinity House's jurisdiction. And basically speaking, this is what has overtaken and replaced keepers. Uh, virtually just a microchip. It does the job of three keepers, it monitors everything just as we did. Um, and it's just as efficient, if not more efficient, dare I say it. It was a way of life. Um... And, I mean, some of them, some of the poor buggers have never worked since. You know, they, whether they couldn't fit into a normal way of working or whatever, I don't know. But, um, you know, a lot of them have uh, died. Um, you know, pretty soon they won't <laughs> there won't be many of us around anyway, I don't think. But uh, no, I, at the time when I made the decision to stay here and finish, I thought, have I made the right decision? But now, in retrospect, I did make the right decision. Yeah. Yeah. When I went down to Nash Point, uh, they still had the fog signal there, complete, entire just as if it, it would just stop running, but yet it had been uh, made redundant for over a year. So I walked in this engine room, and keepers being keepers, they kept it clean and tidy, all the brass was still polished, and you felt as if you'd just go and start up, get this fog signal running. But of course it had been decommissioned by then. And walking into this just still engine room, you knew it was dead, had no further use for it. It was very, very sad, in a way. Very sad indeed. And I think for a number of my colleagues felt the same way. We've spent so many years with all this equipment, maintaining it to look after it. Then when automation came, it was just wham, that was it. No longer necessary, on the scrap heap. Very strange, very strange feeling altogether.